Well, hurry, hurry, hurry. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Fat Albert. Y'all, that was my favorite cartoon as a kid. Matter of fact, you know what I th think I'm going to do today when I um, get back home? I think I'm going to um, YouTube that and just kind of make a playlist <laughs> so that if I feel myself getting stressed this week, I can have some comedic relief. So anyway, shout out to you guys. Look, I am getting our episode, our daily chat hangout up early today because like you, I have an extremely busy day today and tomorrow. And I'm, I don't know y'all what time tomorrow I'm going to be able to get it up, but it will be up. Um, before the end of the day on my end, my time zone. So anyway, so shout out to all of you guys, my view on the view, the MBOTV podcast. Well, first, before I talk about the show, let me tell you how I, you know, what I thought about this decision by the president. Um, a lot of you've already heard because you were with me on my other podcast because I came on yesterday evening. I cried. Yes, I cried. I was, I had such a wave of different emotions. I, my, I cried. I didn't go like, oh, 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 but I cried. Like I just put my face in my hands and I just let it out. And um, <laughs> anyway, I ain't going to tell that part. Anyway, I cried. I felt like disappointment. I had like so many feelings and then I felt hopeful and one of the things I want to encourage everyone to do is always allow yourself to be human. That's number one, because as human beings, we are emotional creatures. Now, being emotional is not the same as allowing your emotions to run your life. Those are two totally different things. To not experience or have emotions would be to not be human. <laughs> it would be a lot of, like be an angel. <laughs> okay, None of us are there. Okay. And so you got to be gentle with yourself. So allow yourself to, to have the reaction. Kind of like when we talked about this, a lot of you guys remember when we were all going through COVID. Whoa, I think I cried like every other day. A lot of you know, I used to have a very small business. I had to let it go. I cried. I went through the whole thing. And then we were in lockdown. And I'm a very social person. Like a lot of you guys, I have a very, very social personality. So not being able to go anywhere. Do, I mean, it was just like a range of emotions. And so... A lot of us, it was a historic event. A lot of us had so many things that we experienced. I mean, people's relationships broke up. People got back together. Also remember some people relapsed. We were just experiencing something we had never, ever experienced before. And so it was normal and right to have an emotional reaction to that. It's abnormal to not have emotional reactions to things, right? And so yesterday was another historic event. And so we're going to have those of us who care about the country, those those of us who believe in civic duty, we were going to be we we're going to have an emotional reaction to these things. I know I was looking on um <laughs> X and Instagram last night. We were just having a little bit of fun <clears throat> and a lot of people were like they ate <laughs> a lot of people said they took a drink. <laughs> a lot of people said they had to blow off steam. I know I watched one guy, he was like boxing. He was like this is how I, I got to release this tension. And it was just really like Great to see so many people understand you're having this reaction. A lot of people beat themselves up when they have re emotional reactions or they say, I just felt so bad about feeling this way. Those are people who haven't quite come to center to themselves and who don't have a stronger relationship with yourself. You got to understand your nature, your own human nature. So I cried. And then, like I said, I felt so disappointed because I like Joe Biden. I think he is a decent human being. Now, you may think he's horrible. You may think he's a pedophile. You may think blah, blah, blah. And you're welcome to your opinion. But do not tell me. Don't even try to tell me that I shouldn't have that. I don't have a right to feel about the man the way I feel, because at the end of the day, none of us know him. OK, and so I like him. I really believe with everything in me that that man cares about our country. And I just didn't want him to see him give in to the pressure. Listen, I wanted him to step down, but I wanted him to do it because he felt like, you know, I just, I just can't. A lot of you were with me when I gave the analogy, um, because I felt like two years ago, I understood what Joe was doing. You know, it's kind of like if you're a parent and you're walking with your little kid, those of you who have kids, if they're grown, imagine when they were little. 
and it's just you and your son or you and your little daughter and you are holding his or her hand and you're walking across the street and then you fall and you injure yourself and you cannot get up. So you tell them, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and cross the street. I will, I'm going to do my best to get over it, but you go ahead. But then you look to your right and you see a huge 18 wheeler coming so fast. And you know, if you can't get up, it's going to hit your kid. It's going to kill your kid. And you try and you try and you try and you're screaming, go, go, go. But you just can't get up. You just can't. And you just close your eyes and pray for the best, right? Well, I felt like that's what was Joe was doing. Joe knows. He, Joe knew he he was he's ill and he's just not there anymore like that. But he saw the 18 wheeler, a.k.a. Trump and all the crazies, Project 2025, all those things. And he was trying and trying and trying like that parent who's stuck in the road, but he just couldn't. And so I wanted him to step down and step aside rather, just like he said he was. He was going to be a one term president. He's going to be a bridge to the next generation. But he didn't. I didn't want to see him have to be pressured out because even though people are talking about his legacy and his legacy is vast. And listen, my hat's off to Joe. Joe in my lifetime, in my lifetime, mine has done more for the black, for black people, my people than any other president in my lifetime. Now there were presidents when I was younger, but I, girl, I was two or three. I don't know. I didn't know anything about what was going on. I'm speaking at really about from the time I turned 18 to now, he is the most, for me, has done so much. And just for people, I love the way he is so, um, he was, he filled his White House with diverse people. Listen, we have the first gay person, um, openly gay, I should say, (laughs) Pete Buttigieg as our transportation secretary. I mean, listen, come on, that's historic. Okay. We have He put a black woman on the Supreme Court who was very qualified. So it had really nothing to do with her race, but yes, something to do with her race because he made a promise, right? He's just done so many things. I mean, look at all the people, the first transgender, the first this, the first that. This guy understands America has changed and you got to get with it. So it was hurting me because I thought, wow, he see, he gave in. But I understand that money talks. You cannot run a campaign if donors pull out. You just can't, y'all. I was reading something and I know I'm going to get to the show, but I wanted to, you know, talk with y'all about this too. And I'll, I can't wait to read your comments about how you responded to the news yesterday evening or yesterday afternoon. But I was reading, uh, I think it was like, was it on Politico or was it on the Associated Press? I can't remember. But anyway, girl, they said that this was like, like a couple of weeks ago, they raised like $6 million and it was like gone in two days. And I'm like, what? But then they listed off all this stuff because they were talking about in this article just how expensive it is to run campaigns. And you got to pay this one and this one and this ad over here and you got to run ads across the country. And then you got to, and I was like, oh, wow. I, I just, it, I, I can't fathom that much money being gone that quickly. But, you know, it happens. So when the donors started pulling out, I think all of us kind of saw the writing on the wall. Even though even the ladies today, shout out to Anna, she, you know, made a mention of George Clooney because I really feel like Anna, George Clooney spurred this when he wrote that op ed and it was not disrespectful at all. And he had a right to write it, um, but he called out leading Democrats in that op ed and it's still free, guys. You can go read it. Uh, I was reading it yesterday to my other audience because he did some the stuff he said in that article. Things changed immediately after July 10th when his article was published the very next day. July 11th, Nancy Pelosi started talking to Joe, then Chuck Schumer, then Hakeem Jeffries, because he named them. And he said, all of them have told me this privately. (laughs) So he just made them. He forced them to say publicly what they had been saying privately. And isn't that what we all want? Listen, don't be whispering behind my back. Come on out in the public and say what you got to say. And so at the end of the day, I, like I said, I ended up feeling after the cascade of emotions, I felt hopeful. Kamala Harris and whoever, they have my vote. She has my prayers. And I mean that for real. And she also has my support. I'm also going to donate financially. So for me, I'm all in and I feel more excited now. I feel hopeful. I feel energized. I'm seeing on last night, we were looking at the young people who were saying they weren't going to vote and now they're going to vote. And I'm like, I don't care how, why you're going to vote. Just make sure you do. We have got to all do this together. Good people will win in the end, but good people can't stay silent. Good people can't stand on the sidelines and crab and complain and then not do anything. It just doesn't work that way. So anyway, now I've gotten that all out. Now let's talk about the show. (laughs) 
Okay, Sunny got on my last nerve today. Even though I was so excited to hear what she had to say, I thought, girl, if you don't stop talking and let these people talk. Y'all, did you see this? Okay. So <clears throat> Whoopi introduces the topic, you know how it goes. And then Sunny's the first person to talk. She takes her full minute because I think they each have a minute. Isn't that what we learned during COVID, y'all? Somebody help me with that. Wasn't that we learned when they were all doing the Zoom thing or whatever the video conference was? We learned that the reason that there was no crossover talking was not just because they were at home, but also because they each had a little timer that said, okay, you got like 30, well, it's either 30 seconds or it's a minute to get out what you're going to say. And then it's going to be the next person's time to talk, which made it very easy on Whoopi to moderate. But anyway, so Sunny took her full 30 seconds or minute. Okay. Then it was time for Alyssa to talk. So Alyssa starts talking. Then Sunny starts interrupting her. I was like, girl, would you hush? You don't already talked at least a good minute. And then did you guys see how Alyssa was looking? I was totally with her today. I had the same look on my face, girl. They just couldn't see me. I was like, so Alyssa gave that look and then she kept looking at Whoopi. And you know what? I I was even at home saying, Whoopi, jump in here and stop it. And then finally, okay, after Sunny has made yet two or three more points after her long point, then Whoopi says, let her finish. And I'm like, Whoopi, that was so wrong. Um, you should have stopped her. It's Alyssa's minute or 30 seconds now. And listen, it's not so much that I want to hear everything Alyssa has to say, even though today in particular, I was looking forward to it because look, the little piece of dissenting voice we have is going to come from her. Okay. And so I wanted to hear kind of what she was going to say in particular, if she was going to say she's going to vote for Kamala, which she did not say, by the way, I'm telling you guys, this girl's going to vote for Trump. She ain't fooling me. But anyway, I digress. So anyway, so Alyssa finally was able, okay, to make her point. It, but it had to take Whoopi to say, let's stop and let her talk. And I thought, girl, so anyway, but you guys remember, I talked to y'all about this when we were reading together Megan Stacks. And I know a lot of you say, quit talking about that article, but it was a bombshell. Megan Stacks, New York Time uh, article, The View Has Narrowed. She talked about Sunny in that article. Remember, you can still go back and read it. You can find it on their website. She said, Sunny has become the, the leading voice. And she said, I don't know if that's by design or if that's just because she's a prosecutor. But she, in essence, said she talks too much on there. And it's like, girl, hush, you, this is not your show. This is not the Sunny Hostin show. It's not, it wasn't the Megan McCain show. And when it got so bad, they got rid of her butt. And if you don't, get it together, you're going to be on the chopping block next. Okay. But I didn't like that. I thought, but wait a minute, you took so long. Let Alyssa talk. There are people who want to hear what she has to say. So anyway, but when Alyssa made that face and then did you guys see how Sarah was looking too? Sarah felt it too. And I was like, okay, but Sunny, and I thought Sunny was oblivious to what was going on around her. I'm like, can't you see your coworkers making that face? Like here she goes again. So, I mean, come on, let's read the room. So anyway, so that was very annoying. Now, did you guys see Whoopi's tattoo? <laughs> I loved it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that's permanent or do you think it's one of those temporary design type things? I have a friend. She is Indian. And um, was it her sister or was it her cousin? Anyway, a few summers ago, someone in their family got married. And this was a part of their ceremonial... Um, dressing was they they get these temporary designs you know and it was just so beautiful so I love the fact that Whoopi was showing it off by having her sleeve rolled up but I just want to know if it's temporary or, or or it could be permanent because she does have other tattoos um and so anyway I was hoping at the end of the show um that they would talk about that but the end of the show was preempted. Was it preempted on y'all's side too? Because ABC News came in and with a special report that Kamala had spoken for the first time since the historic announcement yesterday, um, you know, at the White House. Anyway, so that was very interesting to see. Now, the other part of the show that really stood out to me today is what Anna had to say about Joe stepping down. I, I guess I will say to y'all, when I heard Anna say what we're about to listen to, it helped me understand my own emotions yesterday because I was like, yes, that's exactly what I was feeling too. So take a listen and I'll be right back. I was sad. Um, you know, I, I, as I've said here many times, I love Joe Biden. I was, I was sad, you know, in the way that when you see a champion athlete retire, leave it all on the field 
and walk away into the sunset. That made me sad. It gave me nostalgia. Yeah, I felt that way too, y'all. I was like, it was a feeling of nostalgia. You know, it was a feeling like, you know, wow. You know, like I, I just felt like he's, you know, he's done so much good and he has been able to work across the aisle better than anybody. Um, and that's really because a lot of, you know, when Obama was president, I mean, my goodness, Mitch McConnell and his cronies, they worked together so hard to keep, they just tried to make that presidency both terms as mo as difficult as they could. And it was all racism. It was nothing more than sheer racism. So um, I was glad to hear Anna speak about that. Um, Sarah also expressed my sentiments today. Now I have a story about Sarah and Anna that I'm going to be bringing to you sometime, child, this week. I don't know what day it'll be. Um, but the next thing that stood out to me today is Whoopi. <laughs> I'm like, Whoopi, stop. It's not about, it was not about Joe's age. So take a listen to what Whoopi had to say, and then I'll be back to talk to you about it. I'm just excited. I think a lot of people are I'm excited. bored by it. I'm oh. telling you, I'm bored by it. I'm really? I, yeah, I'm bored by it. And I'm going to tell you why. Hmm. You know, the messaging that we have put out to people over a certain age is horrific. Hmm. We have basically said, hey, you know what? We kind of think if you're over a certain age, you don't really have what it takes to do the job that you're doing. That's the messaging that we've put out. So I'm bored by hearing that. I'm also bored by people saying, well, you know, it's the next generation. It's still an unknown. We can believe what we like to believe. And I love Kamala and have defended her from day one. I know she can do the job. I would have preferred my... Democrats to do this not publicly yes. and in everybody's face that. because what it did was I'm like whoopee they had to do it publicly they had to guys I don't know let me tell you what I think about this I understood what whoopee was trying to say that she didn't like the fact that they did it all publicly um she also doesn't like the fact that you know, they kind of sent this message that if you're old you're no longer useful but that wasn't the case you know like Sarah pointed out Joy is 81, Biden is 81, but we can tell a, a stark difference in their um, mental um, fitness, right? Their their mental acuity. And this wasn't about Joe being old. I mean, we knew the man was old in 2020, you know? It was that he just, I hate, guys, oh my gosh, I feel like crying. It's just that he's just not there. He's not there like he used to be. I personally believe the president has um, early stage Parkinson. And I know I sh maybe shouldn't say that, but listen, I feel that I have reason to say that when I learned, what was it? That story came out like a week ago that the white house logs showed that the neurologist who was, uh, who specialized in Parkinson's visit visited, excuse me, the white house eight different times in an eight month period, which means he came once a month for eight months. I know they tried to put it off. He was coming for somebody else. I'm like, y'all need to stop lying. He was not coming for somebody else. And um, uh, that's a whole lot of times, right? So that tells me he he was, mon whoever this dude is, because they refused to release his, release his name. They said it was against the rules of privacy to release his name. But obviously the man um, is being monitored um, for Parkinson. And just like any disease, the early stages is good. I mean, you can still function and do this and do that it's like cancer or anything else. But then as the stages progress, right, you, 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 your functions become more limited and more limited until the inevitable. Right. And so, um, if, you know, if it's not in remission and we know Parkinson's right now with our science and technology and things like that, it's not reversible. And so, um, I, I, but what gave me really confidence in Joe was that I looked to one of the experts that I looked to is Dr. Bandy Exley. A lot of, you know, I've been singing her praise now for six years. Um, she said that even after watching the debate, she was not concerned about his mental fitness. That gave me confidence because she's not only an expert for me, an expert is someone who not just has the education, uh, not that not only has the education, but has the experience to back it up. She was in the field for 25 years that see, I was in the field for 18 years, just not in mental health that way. So I know what, what experience means. And I know what experience actually gives you in terms of perspective. So that's why I trust her so much. And I don't feel like she's a grifter. Now, if there comes a point where the fame goes to her head, 
the influence goes to her head and I see a shift and I'll stop listening to her and I'll unfollow, you know, so we all got to make our decisions. But um, at the end of the day, I, I'm like, Whoopi, this was more than about him, the fact that the man was old. If Joe at 81 was like joy, we, I don't think anyone in the country, not even these donors like George Clooney and others, I don't, uh, the Disney lady who said, I'm holding all of my coins until you guys make a decision, right? I don't feel like anyone would have had a problem with him staying in the race. It's just that after that debate, even like me and you, a lot of you been with me for the last few years, I've been talking about the fact that I didn't think Biden was there like he used to be mentally for several years. So for my commentary is not new regarding Biden, but like George said in his op-ed, <clears throat> Clooney I'm speaking about, we were just so shock laden with the mess of Trump that we were just choosing to ignore the obvious about Biden. And I can say that I didn't ignore it, but I was still saying, you know, I believe he can do the job, which I do. I do believe he can still do the job. Um, the experts who matter to me say that they feel he can do the job. He can finish out his term. And I feel like as long as he has great people around him, like Kamala, like uh, Pete Buttigieg, like many, many others and his uh, his closest aides, I feel that they will make sure that things, the country continues to run the way it needs to be and the right decisions continue to be made. But at the end of the day, I'm like, Whoopi, you need to get off of this age thing because it was more than just age. Now, Whoopi did say, and you saw the show, so you know it. So I'm not going to play that part. She did make it she did say, I don't feel this way just because I'm getting closer to his age. Now, Whoopi is 68. She said, but you know, it's just because of the messaging. But I'm like, that was only a part of the messaging. Don't you guys think I'm like, it was only a part of the messaging, really, you know, but at any rate, she said she was bored with the whole thing. Um, but I feel like they understood that once those donors started pulling out, they had to put pu public pressure on Biden. And it really shouldn't have had to be that way. You know, maybe he should have just said from the get go, y'all, listen, I'm not going to run for reelection. OK, let me look at my notes. Um, oh, oh, I cannot wait. OK, Whoopi's books. OK, so, you know, they're doing Ladies Get Lit. Whoopi recommended a book today. By the way, I've entered the contest. <laughs> Any of you guys entered the contest. I want everybody's books. I've never won. Have any of you ever won? I just want to know. Mm -hmm. Um, Whoopi rep recommended a book that I, I'm going to call the library. I'm, I put, made it on, put it, excuse me. I put it on my to-do list. I'm thinking faster than I'm speaking. I put it on my to-do list today. I'm going to call the library and see if they have this book. It's called Aretha Cool. And it's a, um, a book of just photographs, uh, of the last 10 years of her life, all the, the exciting things that she was doing. And they had the, um, the photographer, my, Matthew Jordan Smith, in the audience today. And so Whoopi had a conversation with him. You guys saw that. I was like, oh, my God. You may tell y'all something. Aretha Franklin, I had an aunt. She's passed on. When I tell you she was a smitting, this, um, spitting image of Aretha Franklin, she, she really was. And now she couldn't sing. <laughs> she was her same height. I mean, they literally could have been sisters. And... Um, Anytime I see Aretha Franklin, she also spoke like Aretha. They were both Southern girls uh, raised in the church. I think of my aunt. And so I was like, ah, oh, I can't wait to see those photos. Um, and not to mention when I listen to Aretha's music and I have Aretha in my playlist, by the way, my exercise playlist, not only does she take me to church, but she just gets in my soul. I mean, there's, listen, y'all, there is never, ever on this earth going to be a voice like Aretha's. You get what I'm saying? Anybody across the world, no matter their race, their age, if they hear her sing, they know that's Aretha. Nobody even has to say, this is an Aretha Franklin song. Everybody knows that voice. Um, and so I cannot wait to get that book. I think the ladies get lit, Brian. Is one of my favorite segments that they have ever come up with because I'm a huge reader and um, they were promoting Audible, by the way. So this particular book is not on Audible. Um, by the way, you can also get a free 30 day trial of Audible from me. Just check the comments, um, use my link and you get free 30 days if you've not um, tried Audible before. So that was very interesting and I can't wait to find out Sarah's books, um, Anna's books. <sighs> Y'all already know that Sonny's going to recommend. I just think that's so distasteful. I'm sorry. I do. I do. Look at Whoopi. Whoopi uh, published, was it three books this year? Bits and Pieces. 
Well, no, 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 no. Yes, yes. The comic book series, right? The, the superpower one. That's two. No, okay. No, the other was when she um, signed up to do, uh, to, to, um, she's a partner in the black streaming service. Here you got an EGOT over here. Okay. And she is currently still on her book tour. And not one time has she recommended her books. She's actually trying to promote other authors who need the exposure like Matthew Jordan Smith, who for me, I never heard of him today, heard of him before. So I've learned about a brand new African-American photographer who's done this excellent work. Now I'm going to follow him on Instagram. So he's going to get all these follows. He's going to get people to purchase his book or people like me whose coins are tight. I'm going to get it from the library, but it's like, but then here you go. You're going to come up here like you did last year and the year before and recommend your book. I don't care what anybody says to me. I think it's tacky. I think it's classless and it's tacky. It's like, girl, you've been on the book tour, just like Whoopi. You've been on all the other shows promoting your book. Don't take this opportunity to continue to promote yourself for me. And I know a lot of you are going to drag me, go ahead, drag me. I do not care. I feel like it's just another example of Sonny's outrageous ego. It's like, girl, do you know how many Latina, okay, and African American and Native American, and we could go all and on and on, Asian Americans out there who have written excellent books and they need this kind of promotion. They need it. But you're going to take one of your three picks to promote yourself. And you're on a number one daytime talk show every single day, Monday through Friday, rather. You don't need the promotional. The, the promotion they do. And so I think it's tacky and I do not like it. Okay. Now, having said that, <laughs> I know some of you are dragging me now. You're so jealous of Sonny. You're so, okay. Say whatever you want to say. I said what I had to say. You say what you got to say. We're, we're still good. We're still friends. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we got. Okay. What was, what was Alyssa saying, guys, when she was, did she say veep states or was she trying to say deep state? I don't know. Sometimes Alyssa talks so fast or she speaks rather so fast. And I understand why. I mean, she has to go because if you don't, girl, <laughs> you, you're probably not going to get a, 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 a word in edgewise. But, you know, that's the nature of the show. We, we talk about it a lot. I've given the example of double the game of double dutch. you got to know when to jump in, girl. You just got to start jumping. OK, as the ropes are turning, a.k.a. the mouths are moving. Right. But sometimes like today, I was really trying to follow her. Uh, which I rarely do in her conversation. Uh, that's normally my time to pick my nails or, you know, clip my coupons. But I was trying to follow her today, but she was, you know, at one point she was speaking so fast, I wasn't quite sure what she said. And I was like, what is she talking about? I don't, I've not heard of Veep States, but maybe she said something else. I don't really know. So guys, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the show, my view on the view. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I normally, uh, here recently, I haven't really been paying that much attention to the viewer deals, guys. And even though I love when Greta comes, I like when Adam comes too, because y'all know Adam is a queen, right? <laughs> Adam's going to make sure, girl, his hair is blown out just right. <laughs> and I like the way Adam, I like Adam and Sonny's banter. He's like, because you know, Sonny says she has big feet. And Adam only, you know, he only puts out the sandals. I forgot what he called them. They're like, I forgot some kind of thing like that. You're when you're staging products. And so he was like, Sonny doesn't understand. We don't have anything for her big feet out here today. And so anyway, so I like that she lets him joke with her like that. And they joke together. Um, it's just that I feel like the summer products, Ryan, are just too repetitive. I'm like, get new things. And I understand there's only so many products out there, but. I don't know. I feel like that time can be taken up, you know, you know how they do like the dermatologist will come or the dog people like do something like that. But the Veer deal, I mean, not to mention, Brian, remember, people are on a tight budget. OK, people are still recovering from COVID. People are recovering from groceries still being high and gas still being high, even though their things are going down now just a little bit, a little bit. But at the end of the day, a lot of people don't have a lot of disposable income on just um, more junk. OK, so maybe have some my suggestion, because I'm trying not to just complain. I'm trying to give suggestions to my, my suggestion would be how about having um, uh, somebody on there who can talk about how to lower your grocery bill? You know, two minutes on that. Um, 
uh, money saving tips, you know, um, things that viewers can actually use and make use in their own life, how to, um, save on gas. You know what I mean? Um, things like that, that are more useful than spin, spin, spin. Now I understand that a lot of those, um, companies are sponsors of the view and they are advertisers. And so a great part of your deal is that they have to do that. Um, but I just feel like, you know, we don't need to have it two to three times a week, or maybe they need to financially to have it two to three times a week. Okay, guys, there you have it. I gave you guys a long episode today because I know a lot of you are on the train, a lot of you are on the bus. And so this will be a good thing to fold close to or to just kind of make it through your subway ride. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Um, I will tell you now that I'm making plans to change the podcast. OK, and what my plans are. <clears throat> they're very elementary at this point. A lot of you know that um, I can't remember when it was, girl, because ugh, time goes by so fast. But at one point, I didn't just have the podcast here on YouTube. I had the podcast on Spotify. I think I was on Apple. I know I was on iHeart, I think. But anywho, um, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be testing it out. It's not going to be something that um, I'm doing today, of course. I'm just telling you about my future plans. Um, So there's going to come a point and I'm going to start it, start testing it out over the summer when the ladies are on their break. But I'm, my goal is to come to a point where I have the daily chats on podcast everywhere, not, but they will not be on YouTube. They will be every other place. And then all my stories that I do about the view, like Megan McCain said this on our podcast about, or, you know, like we're going to be talking about today or what we talked about this weekend, uh, the fact that some crazy Christians are dragging Joy and calling for her to be fired. By the way, I forgot Joy wasn't going to be there today. So I, I hope that when she comes tomorrow, that they don't even address it. Let them address it on the Behind the Table podcast and the people, the crazy Christians who are so concerned about her statement, go and make them listen to the podcast and get more clicks and views over there, right? But I hope they don't even bring it to to bring it up tomorrow at the table when she gets there. Um, But so that's my goal is that when season 28 kicks off, because I really believe that that's going to be Joy's last season and Sunny's last season and possibly, excuse me, I believe it's going to be Whoopi and Joy's last season. And it possibly could be Sunny's last season, seeing as we know, as of today, girl, July 22nd, 2024, her contract has not been renewed. Okay. So that doesn't mean it won't be, but it hadn't been up to now. Okay. And so, um, I want to make sure that the daily chats are going to be accessible to everyone worldwide. And of course, YouTube is still like that, but I just want to branch out. And then this will be, like I said, solely for stories about the view, like not daily chats. Um, so there you have it. Those, those are my plans. Um, and I'm slowly working on those, you know, I have so much stuff on my plate. And Dave and I were talking about this, like I really need to take some stuff off my plate. Both of my podcasts, y'all, are hobbies. And so I might eventually have to let one of them go. I'm not sure which one, um, because as our family changes and things change, I just, you know, you just got to, you know, really make some decisions. Okay, so I got to go. It's around lunchtime for me as I'm making this. And um, I need to decide what that's going to be uh, since I'm at home by myself. And um, I'm probably not going to cook mm-hmm, because I don't have to. I'm going to probably Uber Eats or something uh, something in. So I should have to figure out what that's going to be. So, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. What did you think about today's show? What landed for you today? Um, again, I'm going to be coming back and I'm going to be talking about, not today, but sometime this week, I'm going to be talking about Sarah and Anna. And I'm also going to be talking about Whoopi and Sunny. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys. I enjoy y'all so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Let everyone know in the comments your thoughts on today's show. And I'll talk to you on tomorrow. Bye, guys.